welcome uh, everybody to this discussion about uh, with the topic, how we look at Africa. It's a panel organized jointly by Doc Point Helsinki Documentary Film Festival and uh, EU Commission's Helsinki representation. My name is Kati Jurus. I'm the artistic director of the festival uh, and I will be moderating this discussion. Um, the background for this discussion is the fact that we have a great selection of uh, films from Africa made by African filmmakers, new films. Um, and we wanted to present this series because I had a feeling that uh, we tend to see even more films from Africa by Westerners than we see films by African filmmakers. So we wanted to change this a little bit, uh, show at least five great African films. Um, and we also wanted to uh, give people to have a, have a chance to judge for themselves whether the films are different, whether there, there is a difference when you compare African made films about Africa to European made films from Africa. So actually all of, all, all of it is of course about representation uh, the, the familiar and uh, fashionable term, the discussion about who has the right and who has the capacity uh, to talk on whose behalf. Uh, so in this discussion, we will also probably discuss like whether, whether it's okay that, that we watch film, so many films about Africa by somebody else uh, than Africans. And, uh, and uh, come maybe to a joint conclusion about something. There was supposed to be a statement by Jutta Urpilainen, who is the Finnish commissioner, uh, EU commissioner for international partnerships uh, here at the beginning of this, this talk. Uh, but due to a few technical problems, we couldn't add it here, but it's on our webpage. So please go ahead and take a look at it as well. She's talking about the same issues. There, unfortunately, it's in Finnish, so our English speaking friends will not be able to understand. So enough about me and this thing, and let's let's present the panelists. First of all, we have director Sam Soko uh, from Kenya, from Nairobi. I believe you are in Nairobi at the moment, um, who has directed the, the film Softy, uh, which is part of our selection in the international selection here at Dock Point and part of the, also the African theme. Uh, and it's your first feature length film, isn't it? Yes, yes it is. Pretty good. Uh, it, it has been doing really well, by the way, the, the film, we'll talk more about that. Uh, then we have Sofia Achame. Uh, welcome, Sofia. Uh, Sofia is here representing the Finnish, Bay, Finland based think tank called Think Africa. Uh, you live in Helsinki, you're a human rights lawyer, so lovely to have you on board and very, very eager to hear your, your insightful views. Then we have Ina Soiri joining us from Pretoria. Uh, she's currently at the Finnish embassy working there at, as the education and science counselor. Uh, she has been working at the, she has been uh, heading, leading the Nordic Africa Institute um, in Uppsala previously, and you have been living in many African countries uh, before. And then we are joined by Ismo Ulvila. Welcome Ismo. Uh, you are the new head of communication at the European Commission's Helsinki representation. Uh, so welcome you all. We have also at the moment 106 people at the audience. Uh, so we will welcome questions from the audience as well. Please use the Q&A function if you want to ask something or add a comment. And, uh, and I think we are ready to begin our discussion. I would like to first start with Soko. And I would like to thank you for the film. Uh, it's, you know, it's a very, for me, it's a very universal story uh, because it's about this Kenyan activist politician who has this great love for his country and wants to save it from the corrupt elite that is currently uh, leading. Uh, but he also has a great passion for his family 
And in a country like Kenya, it's not obvious to, to combine these two, uh, two things because it's actually quite dangerous as we find out in the film. Uh, so very universal. The film premiered at Sundance last year where it won the special prize for editing, which is wonderful. And it's been screened on numerous, numerous big uh, film festivals after that. And also in cinemas in Kenya. And I believe my understanding is that it's been very popular in Kenya. And I warmly recommend the film to, to all of you who haven't seen it yet. Um, I would like to ask you, because I think your film is one of the maybe three or four films from the African continent this year that has been touring the international festival scene in a major way. Um, why, why are there only three? What do you think? That, that's a simple question to answer. <laughs> the three because the, it is very difficult to get out more. Um, there's, I'd say this is this it's it's there are many reasons why it's difficult to get out more, but it's not easy to come up with ideas and bring them to fruition when you are in the African continent and to the level and scale that can be appreciated around the world. Like it's it's there's there's so many inhibitions that exist. Um, some are, are of course, because of our, our governance situation, but others are due to, you know, systemic um, barriers that have existed from the colonial period and to the present day. Uh, the barriers currently, are they more uh, because of the African reality or because of the outside world sort of blocking the access? It, the most like the most simple straightforward challenge that we face is financing. So just getting money to make to make your project. Now the reality is for most of our countries, the funding opportunities to the arts is next to non-existent. Mm. So where do you get the money to make anything? You kind of have to apply to um, either foreign foundations or funders or people who can who are looking to to fund certain projects but it's it's not oblivious to us that a lot of the these organizations or NGOs or whichever organizations that would want to fund the arts each of them has uh, an agenda or something that they want to perpetuate so you you have to for most of the filmmakers um, or storytellers have to tell a particular kind of story to be able to get the support to enable them to to make certain films. So you will end up, say, at a festival, you'd find uh, a, a numerous European films about families, just families, a daughter's relationship with a father or um, a mother's relationship with with her children, or just someone discussing about their situation at work. You will never get African stories about that. Our stories have to be political, religious. Like they, they kind of have to have a certain kind of depth um, that is that can be supported. And by that reason alone, you will end up with three films. You got right to the, you got right to the point, and I think we will uh, we will have to continue with this and how how it shows in practice and what kind of advice, for instance, you have received and what kind of uh, comments you have received uh, from the West. And let's get back to your funding as well. But uh, I would like to move to Sofia now and ask you: You've been living in the West, let's say, or the North or however we want to call it, in Finland for 10 years and in Europe in, in 11 years. Um, do, you, do you recognize the, the picture of Africa that has been or is being presented here in the North where you live now? Is it, is it, is it what you know of Africa or do, do you miss something, something else? 
Um, I do recognize it. I know about it from living, growing up in Africa, but it's just one part of it. It's just, it's, there isn't any other left. And there's always a narration by somebody else that I feel that uh, kind of um, doesn't show the diversity and uh, complex uh, attitudes that even Africans have. So in that way, I think it's quite uh, limited. And it's also the, the opinions are further limited because people are not willing to go and see Africa. They're not willing to mingle with Africans, so to, so to say, they're, all, they're in their own bubble. So mm. that is by itself, again, you, the only story they see is, let's just say, from media and news, of course, only mm. broadcasts. bad news is news. Mm. So that is by itself. It's like a vicious cycle in a way. So after having lived here for 11 years, you feel that uh, you still are sort of pushed into a bubble which doesn't include, like you, you are not mingling with the Finnish society or you they don't let you mingle with the Finnish society. Is that it? Is that what you're saying? Um, no, not really, actually. Okay. I'm not saying that. Of okay. course, there are uh, means to mingle with the Finnish society, yeah. but there are challenges. It's not as easy as people might think that uh, you live in uh, Helsinki, so you're part of Helsinki. Uh, lang there's language barrier, of course, yeah. but yeah. that's not the only thing. No. There are so many invisible structures, glass ceilings that are that you're not able to fight because they're systemic. Mm -hmm. And that way we we are not able to participate mm -hmm. because of these different doors that are there but that are not open because of uh, different reasons. So also also something to get get back to. Um, there is there's like something that I think uh, we might want to discuss whether it's still true because uh, all of you at least are familiar with the Nigerian writer called Chimamanda Ngozi Adichie, who has talked about the um, dilemma of a single story, uh, which when, it, when we talk about Africa, the single story is of, of course the story about constant catastrophe and, 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 and poverty and so forth towards with, with uh, we feel well meant pity as Europeans. I'd like to ask all of you, like, uh, and also maybe Isma and Ina, uh, who haven't said anything, but also, of course, Sofia and, and Soko, whether you still recognize it. Are we still stuck to this one single story, or have we been able to move away from it? Um, yeah, if you ask me, you're kind of asking a wrong person because. Uh, I, I, you know, my personal perspective is, of course, very different because uh, I've, I've been living in this, this continent for, for, for decades, but I'm still white European and my eyes are white European or if you say global north. And uh, um, I, I don't like single stories of, of us either. Mm. Um, you are saying that we are seeing Africa with one eyes only, it's not true, absolutely not. And uh, um, I'm somehow amused how much we talk about our image on Africa. Do we talk about our image of Asia or image of America or Latin America? Uh, of course it has roots because mm. uh, uh, we have had this power relation. We've had Africa as, as a sort of it's an object of colonization and, and we still treat Africa as something to be addressed to. So um, I, 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 I rather, I know very much um, the, the point of view of Chimamanda. Um, what, I'm, what I would like to add to that is actually it's uh, Soko's countryman, Pinyawanga Wainaina. Mm. who a long time ago uh, write about uh, how should we write about Africa. And uh, one of his points was that, you know, um, actually Africa should be pitied, worshipped or dominated. That's the way what the stories or what the, what the ones now referring to Soko, what the ones who pay for the representation, 
the ones who pay us to tell about Africa. And I think that's very important. It's always who's the agency to who we work for in order to tell the story about Africa. And mm -hmm. I, I just want to, uh, I, want, I don't want to dominate this discussion, but uh, I, I realize the same kind of structure in research, which I'm working now with. I, I, I find a lot of African researchers being very upset about not being able to choose their agenda because they are being supported and often quite generously, especially here in South Africa, which is a powerhouse for research that the payer is the one who tells you what you should research, what are the important questions to, to, mm. to investigate. Mm. And uh, um, a, a colleague once said that African researchers feel like they are potted plants in greenhouses, that you know they are very well nurtured, but they are not let to grow. But isn't that about the single story? Sorry, because I mean, if somebody else tells you what the story should be. Okay, it might be three stories, but it's still sort of a story that you don't choose yourself. So it's still, we're still talking about the same problem. I think Sofia wants to say something here. Yeah, uh, correct me if I misunderstood it, Ina, but for me, we shouldn't question why should we talk about the image of uh, Africa? Why not Asia or other countries? Because I mean, even recently you have seen about Black Lives Matter. Africans and people of Africa descent all over the world, they're, they're like in the lowest rank of everything. Like, of course, we have to talk about Africa. And of course, we have to talk about African descent. And I don't think if you say cancer, breast cancer, today is breast cancer day, you're not going to say, oh, there's already other cancers. We shouldn't talk about breast cancer. No, today is about breast cancer. So to me, it's always like we have to talk about Africa. And in a way, by talking about it, we will also change African Africans people's image about Europe. The discussion has to be started somewhere. So yeah, just wanted to say that. Thanks. And Ismo, Ismo wanted to comment on that. Thank you. Um, and good evening to everybody. Um, I may have perhaps a little bit different angle and it's based uh, partially on my own experiences. Uh, one of my five international assignments uh, overseas uh, outside Europe uh, was in Africa. In fact, uh, I was a uh, councillor in the commission. Back then there were commission embassies. I was, uh, was councillor in our embassy in, in Senegal. And, um, and uh, I've, been, I've been doing also for professional work, uh, um, handling uh, different kinds of uh, relations uh, at different levels with, uh, with many African stakeholders. And I would argue that uh, in today's world, where uh, we are extremely, increasingly globalized uh, networked, we have the new uh, IT solutions. Uh, it doesn't matter anymore where you are and uh, what is your background. What matters is what you can contribute to and uh, with whom you can connect. Eh? Um, and I think this is also what the commission is now um, approaching in its new strategy of partnerships. Uh, um, I think that's the key word, uh, the partnerships. Uh, um, in, uh, in what comes to the different linking of uh, private initiatives, uh, uh, civic society, uh, partnerships between the governments. Uh, um, I think there has been this progress and development that has, uh, that has been that has uh, taken us uh, thus far, and um, there was uh, there was this kind of like uh, notion of, uh, or I, I heard a comment of uh, of whether we we have uh, this kind of like stereotype uh, uh, view of, um, of of different corners of the world. Um, I, I I don't think that's anymore. Or well, let's say that it's much less the case in today's world. Um, and indeed, I do agree that uh, uh, in all those partnerships that I've been handling uh, with, uh, with different governments or different, uh, different other stakeholders, uh, notably the Latin American direction, um, it's, um, it's rather the issue on how we can match our interest and work together on that basis. Eh? Mm -hmm. Ina wants to say something to this. 
Yeah, no, um, I, I just want to reply to, to Sophia. Of course, we have to talk about Africa. I'm just saying that we don't sort of lump the rest of the continents into a same kind of concept. Of course, we have to talk about Africa. We have to talk about people who are oppressed and, 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 and we have to talk about problems, how, what we can, how we can address them. I was trying to illustrate that we very rarely put Asia in one category and start talking about this is our image of Africa because we know how to single out the countries of Asia. And that is what, what bothers me in this discussion. And uh, not in this discussion, in discussion of Africa, that we always wish to, wish to handle the whole continent as one. And, and then we try to understand, person who's been to Kenya says that, look, I already have experience in the continent, so let me go and try to sell my ideas to South Africa. Mm -hmm. South Africa is a completely different matter. And what I wanted to continue when I said, I think it has some much to do with, I don't know if Soko, you want to comment this. I read a lot of African literature. And what has happened recently is that it has become very Americanized. Mm -hmm. Because um, African, African, read, Af African authors want to sell to the biggest market. And in order to sell to the biggest market, they have to, they have to link the story somewhere to Africa. If you look at Chimana, Chimamanda's latest book, um, Americana. Americana, yeah. Yes. So the story is not that much of Nigeria. It's all about USA. There are a lot of other, other, other books of this, you know, the biggest sellers of Africa. It's wonderful. I mean, I'm not saying it's wrong. I'm just saying that this is the, 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 the power of the money. Mm. And I think maybe yeah. Soko, what you were saying in the mm. beginning, yeah. that's the way it is. You have to address your target audience because the one who is funding you wants it to sell. I think it would be really interesting to hear directly from Soko now when you are saying yeah. that, uh, that it's the, the ones who give the money are the ones who actually uh, tell you or, or, or sort of sort of other ones, the other decision makers on what, what kind of stories can be told by the filmmakers. So can you get can you give us any concrete examples and and has that been the case in your case? Like where did the money come from and did you make a film that will appeal Western audiences? Because it does, your film does appeal to Western audiences. So are you a living example? Uh, of what we are, what we what we are talking about. It's, there's there's so much to absorb, and I have so many things to say. But there's um, one. Th I I agree with the sentiment that we should stop lumping us as a people. However, I also believe it's important for us to recognize who we are, like. I think the world has this image that was created for them of what is African. And there's an expectation for us to meet that de definition. And that's highly problematic because as a Kenyan one, I come from a place that was colonized by the British. So it's not my fault that I speak English. Like I did not, I did not choose to be born in a place that was colonized by the British that forces me to speak English. And the outcome yet is there's an expectation that if I make a film, it's considered a foreign language film. So I'm curious why that would be the case while the language spoken in my film is English, which is not a foreign language because what is a foreign language? And what, what happens in this case is that I'm a consequence of so many other things. I'm a consequence of, um, the, the ethnic community that I'm from. I'm a consequence of the environment of mixtures of cultures that exist in Kenya and in particular, in this case, in a place like Nairobi. Mm. So when you, when you are, uh, I think where the point kind of the place of departure starts is when you are engaging in conversations and it all stems from a point for there has to be contentment from how far we've come. You know, mm -hmm. like by virtue that we've got here, we have to accept that 
you know, it's so great that we got here. So let's, and that for me is hugely problematic because if you see me here, I'm evidence of how difficult it is for more people to come out, not the contrary. It's mm. not that I came out. It's like there's a hundred, two thousand, there's millions of me mm. Mm. who should have the capacity, who have the capacity, the dreams, the potential mm -hmm. to mm. engage in the world. And, and if, and if your question of, in terms of, so the thing that was interesting in making a film from Softie is like, Softie was made for a Kenyan audience. Like the film itself, when from the, from the point we decided it's going to be a feature film, our primary audience was always a Kenyan audience because it represents similar conversations of why is our country the way it is? And we are a consequence of colonialism, of poor leadership from independence to present day poor leadership. But at the same time, we're a consequence of our own decisions as Kenyans. So the film was made with that, but at the same time, there was nothing wrong in the film to have a narrative that speaks to love, that speaks to love of someone who is torn between his family and yeah. his country. And this mm -hmm. is what his family, which is, which is a universal thing. And when we're saying it's universal, it means it's something that we go through anywhere around the world in different, different contexts, but similar situations. Mm -hmm. And one thing I think that kind of dawned to us when, when, and an, an audience that is not Kenyan was watching the film is a realization to them that, oh, I see where you're coming from. And it's kind of a realization that you can also learn from us. Like it doesn't have to be the other way around. Like it does, I don't have to watch what you have made for me to be like, that's the core. Cause we have in, in, in the context of softy exactly is we showcase what it means to have a fraught election mm. if you see what what was happening in the us we kept telling people in the us we have been there every single election cycle so if you want to know what's going to happen ask us like every kenyan election has a candidate who does not accept the results that's mm. something we experience all the time mm. Mm. So it's, it, it, it's, I feel we, we were lucky in terms of the funding that we received because the funding is both from Ken, a, Ken, a, a Kenyan institution, but also international institutions. But we were lucky that the people whom we engage with the giving us funny and here the word is luck because it really is not the case with a lot of people, but the support we received, they allowed us to, not only retain the copyright of the film, because we own the copyright of the film, yeah. but also retain the ability to tell the story that we wanted to tell. Okay. And I feel that's what makes our film unique, but that's why it's important to encourage that films like ours be made. Ina, you want to comment on that? Yeah, I actually like to ask Soko and Sophie, what did you think? Because you 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 push the button now, uh, you know, by saying uh, when American uh, elections during their American elections, you could be, yeah, you could you could easily refer to this this situation, and there was a lot of discussion in the social media that sort of compared the the, the failed election in America, like an election in the banana republic or this happens in Africa. There was a lot of social media discussion. And of course, I mean, it can be a fun fact and it is a fact because I mean, elections go wrong in many places in Africa, not always and, and more and more actually they go, go right. But, um, but so did you find that demeaning? Because, I mean, of course, it came from the fact that, you know, nothing can work properly in Africa. So this is like a banana republic election. I'll, I'll say Sophia should go first. Um, I would say that uh, it's always somehow maybe 
at least my opinion is that it's criticized more when it, something happens in Africa or in African countries. It's like, oh, look at those fools kind of way. But uh, then when it happens somewhere else, then you're like, oh, maybe democracy isn't actually a structure that's perfect. Maybe we should actually create something better. Uh, or if it's something about, uh, it could be something about, let's just say nowadays people are becoming so, uh, what is it, uh, friendly uh, to the environment and they have chickens in their backyard. Now it's like a rich people's thing, but Africans do it because of that's how we live and uh, we need eggs from the chickens, for example. I'm just saying, when, when we do it, we're either backward or we're, you know, or we're like uh, uneducated or something. There's more judgment, I always feel, compared to other countries doing it. Then you're questioning actually the system or the structure more than the people. Go ahead, Sam. And it's it it it's it's a hundred percent what you're saying. It's like if if you play out everything that happened in the U.S. election, if it would have happened in any African country, one the news would be like violence has broken out, and there will be travel advisories issued. It's just that it's COVID. It'll be like you know don't go to that country because we can't assure your safety. Um, the next thing would be amb ambassadors would be summoned to to <laughs> to give a warning, but that's that's not what happens. What happens is we have a different standard. We are treated to a different standard, and that's something we we have to continue to talk about and we have to continue to to engage with. But I think what's what is important is how, like what narratives have continued to perpetually be told about the place we are in that allow people to think things like that, that allow people to, to feel and not see that there's more to this, to this, to our countries and to our people that are beyond, like, I'm not saying we have many problems, like we have many problems and we, we probably will continue to have those problems as long as the leaders, the leaders we have are the, the way they are. But at the core, it's Africans who have to deal with those problems. We like we are the we we are the ones who have to to deal with that problems because all we are asking for is stop interfering. That's it. It's like <laughs> I I actually have a I actually have a question here from uh, somebody from the audience, which I think is quite interesting. If I'm reading it right. Someone once said to me that most African films we see in Europe are not really showing what an African gaze or a artistic approach of filmmaking is because most Africans making films have gone to film schools in Western countries and have adopted the Western way of approaching filmmaking. Uh, this was something that I actually also wanted to get into. Um, Sorry, when, I just when, to when, so, so what's, your, what's your comment to that? And so how to I how was, to I solve born, I was born in a place in the west of Kenya called Kisi, right? Mm -hmm. It's like the highlands. I went to school not too far from that place. I went to university not too far from that place. And I came to Nairobi, the capital city, to start working and figure my way myself towards the art. I have never studied abroad. Mm, okay. I, the first time I I actually went. To I left the African continent was to go to film parts of my of, of the scenes that are in the film, Softy. Um, and yes, so I am as authentic of an African filmmaker as you can get. But is that, but like that's not for me. That's not the con. That's not the point. The point is that we don't we can't live without the influence that exists around us like we are a very there's i think there's this ideal of seeking authenticity yes that has been created there's an image that's created of authenticity like mm -hmm. there are kenyans who have grown up lived born existed throughout their lives and only speak english they don't speak any other language they've never left this country but it's wrong that that Kenyan can be viewed as less of a Kenyan than a Kenyan who speaks all the other languages. Because mm. that, those are the tools that are used to make us 
start seeing each other as problematic while not seeing like why 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 does that matter that the only language i can speak is this that doesn't make me less african mm -hmm. so it doesn't well, do, do you think do you think it's a relevant question and this is something that i could ask all of you like uh okay ina and sofia at least have seen uh quite a few of the films in our african selection some uh soko you also know which films are there maybe you've seen some of them ismo you've maybe seen some of them so do you think it's a relevant question to ask like is there a difference if we look at if we watch watch films by african filmmakers uh that are describing africa african reality uh are they different from the films that are made by the many westerners that love to go to Africa and de depict uh, African realities and, and maybe problems. Who wants to answer? Ina, you've seen the films. Yes, I've seen the films, but remember, I also knew that these are films made by Africans on Africa. So, um, uh, you know, there, there are already some preconditions what you, what, 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 you, what, what comes to you, what you take with you when you look at the film. So um, kind of a meta level, uh, if I would say, I always check when I check uh, when when I when I start looking a film, I always first check who is made it, who has mm -hmm. made it, so that I know already what I am to expect. The films what you uh, what you showed in this festival, I mean, they were very different, and I didn't really yeah, like them all. Absolutely, mm -hmm. and uh, um, and I can't say. Uh, Definitely, let's say one of the issue was access. I don't think many European filmmakers could have that access to places and people. Uh, so th there was much better access to an understanding that I think is, is clear when you have a filmmaker who comes from the same country or culture or you know, knows his or her way around. Like there is a difference between a film made by a woman or a man, or you know, uh, so that 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 definitely it gives it gave me uh, that you you could feel that that these films are are, are, are are much they have much more closeness to the subjects and and maybe even in some films you know you probably were part of the story um, somehow because mm -hmm. I often thought about this like. Soko, in your film, I wonder so always, where is the camera? Are they filming themselves? You know, Softy and 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 his his uh, his family. So that's I think one. And but like I said, I mean, also African filmmakers are different, and different things interest different people. And I think these films were very. They were also very illustrative of the realities. I mean, the the Ibadan, uh, Ibadan film was Ibadan. Yeah, and compared to the the, the film about uh, the the Congolese one, um, you know, so uh, it's very difficult to put them in the same category. Absolutely. Um, mm. And this is we have a. Oh, Sofia, did you want to say something to this? Yeah, I wanted to say that uh, if in in stop filming us when uh, I think it's in stop filming us when he gave the little boy to to record his own life or something and he took the camera and he was taking it, he was rollerblading and showing the sea or something. And I feel like if it was a Western movie maker, he would never show an African mm. in a rollerblade. Like, because mm. that's not interesting, that's not authentic. And this also comes from sometimes uh, people visiting Africa, for example, Morocco, Egypt. And when you ask them, have you been to Africa? No, uh, but I've been to Egypt. So what is Africa to them? Mm. It's this... Uh, okay. it's, uh, Think considered as the dark continent or something. There's something that's different. So in that way, you could say that people who have studied in Western countries, Africans, you could say there's a difference because of that. Or we're not seeing the the image of Africa we want to see. Maybe that's what Westerners are seeing. Sometimes I wonder. Mm. And does it does it matter if there is a, if there is a difference? Because I mean, here I have a question by somebody called Brodje who's saying that. What is the African way of doing films or the European way of doing films? I humbly disagree with that rhetoric. Um, there is a different way of telling the story which depends on the individual. 
the way that they are seeing things. And this was like something when we initially talked about this whole discussion uh, with Sophia, it's like, is it even right to organize a, a discussion about African film? Because uh, why do, like you have been saying quite a few times already, why do we keep on talking about Africa? Why don't we talk about uh, 54 different countries? So uh, is this actually your quote? Like, like uh, in the film, Stop Filming Us, the, the filmmaker was asking like, should I not have made this film? So uh, in a way, uh, it leads us to the question like, should we not be having this conversation? Is it like, has the time passed already? You know, these, these questions about like, how, how, what to think about African filmmaking or not? Sam, what do you think? Um, I think the question is not exactly whether there's an African way of, or there's like an African way of making films. I think for me, the question is opportunity and the ability for African filmmakers to tell what they want to say and, and not being restricted by that. Mm -hmm. The decision of what they say we theirs and they can make a film that ends up being a superhero film and that's fine it's them not having the opportunity or the ability to see that their idea or their story or their dreams through because um stop filming us can be about um a community in south america and it can exist within that space and it can be a film that's told about that but it's that person in the film not having the opportunity to make the film that they want to make. Mm. Because it's, I, I think there's, there are many filmmakers who are not from the continent who come and they do find really good stories, right? And that's, that's something that, that happens. The, the challenge usually is they come and present those stories without engaging Africans. They, they, they just come, they film, they finish, and they use an African as a fixer or a second camera or just, you know, someone to hold stuff, but not necessarily engage with an African filmmaker from a creative standpoint and a story standpoint. So why would you do that if you know that they have a different perspective or represent a different perspective, which is important in how you are going to tell that story? Like, and that's, that's the conversation we're having. It's, mm -hmm. it has, it's like, if I go to, if I come to Finland, make a film in, in Helsinki without talking to anyone, and then come show that film in Kenya, don't the Finnish have a right to complain how they're being represented in Kenya? They wouldn't, they would just find it exotic because, because it's so rare. It's, it's a rare example of something that really happens. So, you know, even that wouldn't be uh, problematic. So I, I don't think you can really compare, but Ina Soiri has uh, something to say here. You know, we, we, we Finns, we are so interested in what others think <laughs> about us. So we will be so thrilled if somebody would we'll bother to come. Yeah. Yes, because that's what we are always worried about. What do they think about us? And we would find it so exotic, so fantastic that somebody would bother to come and film us. Um, but that's not my point. It's just the answer to you. Very much the same, what you were saying is, is the way I, 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 I approach research. When I was working at the Nordic Africa Institute, we were always asked, what's the point of a bunch of Nord Nordic citizens sit in Uppsala and study Africa? And my answer was always, we're not doing it alone, right? We are providing a platform to do it together with Africans. You know, half of our staff in, in Uppsala was from Africa or, yeah, represented African people. So uh, that what was very important because I, I fully agree with you. I mean, these are often sort of joint endeavors because the more you add perspectives, the more you understand your own culture as well. Because for example, a wonderful example, what we had often in Uppsala is that when we got our African researchers coming to Uppsala, the way they saw Sweden, 
it opened so many eyes to me as well. And they, they, that made me understand their culture because they see Sweden in a different way than I do. I'm not a Swedish either, but so I think the best shot is to give space to Africans to represent their own culture and their own own own, own society and reality. But it it often, if you have a good European or American or Chinese or whatever, an outsider, it will help you to sort of articulate better what you can, how you can tell your story, because then you take into account the other perspective. Uh, but that doesn't happen. It, it happens more and more. I mean, I must say, uh, in journalism, in literature, in, in filmmaking, I don't know. But I mean, I, I think that's the best combo is to join forces and give space. That's what they were saying in that film, don't stop filming us. Mm. And uh, yeah. Mm. Did somebody want to say something? Because I wanted to ask like, uh, because Sam uh, was quite strongly still saying that uh, it really depends on the, the financing side and the financiers, uh, that the financiers do tend tend to have the tendency of wanting to direct the story to some direction. So I would like you to be a little bit more concrete and maybe tell us uh, who you are talking about. And I think it would be also interesting maybe for Ismo here to hear because uh, EU of course is the, the main, the biggest donor uh, when it comes to at least development aid in Africa and obviously also works within within the film industry in in different programs so who who are the people who want to decide what stories are told there's i i i can't give like specific examples however is giving for instance any kind of funding that comes from a european government um is usually tied to an aspect of life. It can be unemployment, it can be elections, it can like it's always tied to an aspect of life. So if if you are making a film um, in Kenya, for example, and we have an election next year in 2022. So if you are targeting funding, there's a good chance you will access some of the funding that is earmarked for electoral electoral education, for example. Mm. Right. Mm. Um, however, perhaps as a filmmaker, I did not want to make a film about electoral education. I wanted to make a film about mental health, for example, right? So I, I kind of have to postpone my mental health film and make an election film, which which wasn't the case in my, because in my experience, I think I, I had really awesome funders because they... I think there was, they believed in the idea of, of just not only telling um, the story of a country, but also the story of the family. And that allowed us to kind of dig deeper and get greater depth in our story. Um, however, I do know filmmakers who have kind of had to take certain directions because to make sure they finish the film. Mm. I know filmmakers who just had to be like, let them just finish the film and put it out there because they couldn't access the funding because their project was no longer fundable, you know? Mm. And that's that's our struggle. And because of the limited resource, because all of us have to compete for the same resources because we don't have resources that I, in, there's, there's those ones who are lucky to have are very minimal, but if if you have people from 50, 55 countries applying to the same fund, while I, I know in, in Finland because of state funding, you have a lot less people fighting over the resources that are there. So it's it, it's hard. It's mm. Kind of it's kind of that 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 play. Yeah. Ismo, 
Thanks. Um, it's, it, it's a fascinating discussion and, um, and also I've been reading some of the comments in the chat there. Um, I, would, I would like to start with a uh, with comment, uh, just a little bit off the topic, but uh, I don't think there's a European way of seeing these things uh, per se, in the sense that uh, we do have uh, some member states in the, in the EU and the former member states as well that, uh, that have uh, the special ties and special historical uh, relations vis-a-vis uh, -vis, uh, vis -vis certain African countries. Whereas we as the Nordics, I think uh, we have a, perhaps a different perspective in many regards, which is something that I often notice when I, when I discuss with, uh, with, with, with my colleagues. Um, but, but to come back to the question about, uh, about the storytelling and, uh, and the thematic issues, uh, I think there was a good point about this, uh, this, uh, this different uh, approach or the different angle in the sense that I think that uh, films made in Africa uh, are different in the sense that the storytelling is uh, stronger, it is closer to the realities, it is closer to, in a way it's more honest, uh, that's perhaps uh, if I have to say it in one word. Uh, um, you can't generalize it, but, uh, but I think there is that special flavor in, uh, in, uh, in, in what comes uh, from, uh, from the local production. Um, but then when you, when you discuss about the topics and uh, from the European angle or from the EU angle, uh, two specific areas that, uh, for example, for me, for myself, uh, particularly would be interesting. One would be related to the, to the big global challenges we have and how are we, how are we uh, addressing those um, in a local context, in any community context, uh, such as, for example, uh, climate change, uh, desertification, uh, these kind of things. Uh, um, notions of uh, good governance or, or local administration, these kind of things. Uh, and I think that for the commission, uh, those, those would be interesting areas where, where uh, I think that there are so many stories to be told. Uh, um, I think it's much more difficult to find uh, funding, for example, for mental health as the, as, as the, as the, as the example, because uh, that's not necessarily related to, to, to the partnership ideas that, uh, that we would like to uh, promote. But uh, I'm a little bit off my comfort area in that because uh, I'm not uh, managing that, uh, those areas of funding, but um, just brainstorming. Eh? Thanks. Eh? So I'll just quickly, before we give the uh, word to Sofia, it's basically ISMO is in different words saying the same thing as Sam, that there are actually big stories that the EU wants to, uh, wants to get told and hence it affects on the subject subjects that can be chosen by the African filmmakers. But Sofia, you wanted to say something. Yeah, I wanted to say that uh, when it comes to the EU and uh, what EU does in Africa, um, I feel that, uh, you know, Africa is not only a place or a continent, it's also made of people. And there are African people in Europe, but when there are discussions about Africa, whether it's about aid or anything, there aren't any Africans sometimes. There are sometimes experts about Africa and they're not from Africa. They don't have lived experiences about Africa. So, and how Africans are treated outside Africa and inside. So I feel sometimes that uh, we are a bit left out as Africans living in Europe, for instance, that where we can be the connection between Europe and Africa and uh, because we, you know, we're from there. So, it is nowadays that they're starting to say, actually, we forgot the people who, who this is about. The aid is for Africa, so we should maybe include in the table African experts. Now, the people started to recognize that uh, even at the EU level, but uh, this was not the case even in 2020, if mm. I may say. Mm. So I just wanted to say that. <laughs> mm. Ina, you, you have a comment. Yeah, um, for Isma, I actually have a hypothetical challenge. Because uh, what you are saying that EU is interested in, in stories about these big global problems and uh, uh, funding African 
African filmmakers to, to study those issues. What about if a Soko would wish to come to Europe and make um, a, a film about our overconsumption or our exploitation of the illegal migrants in Southern uh, uh, Europe? Would that be something uh, that, that, would that be a story what European Union would like to fund? Because we often think of these global problems that we want Africans to participate in solving the global, global problems, but they have to analyze their own societies. So what if Soko comes now and makes a story of like, for example, you know, human trafficking, which is a very rampant in Europe. And, and, and of course it's not European Union's problem, but it's a problem that persists in Europe and we need to do something about it. Or like I said, our overconsumption or our meat markets or whatever. That's, would that be another type of a perspective or uh, is EU only interested in Africans telling stories about their own societies re in relation to these big global problems? I think that was directed directly to Ismo. So do you want to comment? On taken, um, as, uh, as I just mentioned, I, I'm a little bit off my comfort area in, uh, in saying anything because uh, I'm not managing uh, this, this file, but uh, well, I mean, it's certainly a fascinating idea that we could perhaps further discuss. Um, why not? Uh, <laughs> but uh, I, I mean, I don't want to exclude or I don't want to pretend that I, I, I'm, I'm, I'm expert in our policy approaches in, in how we direct funding in this area. Um, but uh, yeah, personally, I would be open to, uh, to, to see if, uh, if we can discuss that further. Great. So Sam and Ismo, now you should hook up and uh, yeah. Uh, and Ismo, in a way, you are now in the same spot as Sam and Sophia, who are representing the whole of Africa in this in this small uh, panel. So you are now representing the whole of the EU. So uh, so I, I think we are now all kind of suffering from the general generalization uh, problem. Um, Okay, so Isma will try and start working on more funding for African um, filmmakers coming to Europe, looking at uh, the European problems here. What other solutions can we find? Sophia, you represent the organization Think Africa, and you probably have like loads of ideas and, and, and projects going on how to make make the the idea and 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 the image of africa more sort of more re reflective of the reality can you tell us something about the ideas that you have yeah um one of the things we have is uh, representation through participation we want to participate and our members to participate in uh, areas where policies are being made and uh, we want to sit at the table and uh, be part of that uh, and give the information to African immigrants uh, living in Finland. Uh, and um, for instance, uh, the European Union for um, European, uh, European Aid, uh, Union Agency for Fundamental Rights uh, asked their, like as an expertise for us to um, like, uh, review their survey on the discrimination experiences of uh, African immigrants in Finland. So in uh, areas like that we would like to to be to be part of it mm -hmm. and um, the other thing is we want to also in finland tell to uh, Finns, you know our stories our diverse stories and this is what we are uh, trying to do in think africa through for example our book club we read uh, books of african authors uh, from different regions of africa from different walks of life to show them the diversity in uh, african stories Hmm. Maybe you could also uh, come up with a film club and show films by different Africans. Yeah, actually, our book club this year, we're going to show two movies. So maybe we collaborate with you, Cathy. <laughs> okay, definitely. For sure. Yeah. Hmm. yeah. And I think, I think um, like, because 
one of the things we have been talking uh, about with Sofia is the problem that that Finns uh, uh, with African uh, origins or people living in Finland uh, who come from Africa uh, have the problem of having to represent Africa always. They are they are sort of judged as Africans and and, and full stop. So even diversify, diversifying that a little bit uh, will already be quite important, I think, if your organization is able to do that, not only for the Africans and working for the Africans, but also for the, for the, for the majority of the people in the country. Uh, I think it's about time that we started wrapping up, uh, obviously, and I don't think we wanted to come to um, any conclusion, but to bring uh, the magnitude of African realities to be seen and heard and read more widely in Finland and in EU. So I think all of you should come up with an idea or a, a project or something that that is already there or that, that you wish were there. And then we should conclude with that. Ina can start. I just gave my idea. Uh, no, it was a great you know, idea. It was that, such a good, uh, it was we, such a good idea that I thought that you maybe have more. Yeah, we, we should be able to articulate our own problems and not only sort of externalize the problems, these big global problems we'll be talking about. And uh, of course, um, I mean, it, it, it does us good when we are seen by, by eyes of others. Because uh, uh, we, we seem to think that, that Europe is a norm or Western culture is a norm, it's far from it. Um, you know, majority of people in this global uh, planet li lives in another, in, in completely different reality. And as much as we can emphasize or, or give them the voice, I mean, there are plenty of different ways. And of course, the, these are about material things but I mean, it's also demand from every consumer because you know, global consumer market is that we will actively try to engage in looking at different things, different perspectives, uh, and and stop you know uh, being prejud prejudiced. I mean, for example, uh, 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 Nollywood films. They, mm. There's a wonderful, rich, you know, almost the biggest. Uh, uh, production of, of yeah, uh, I must say a lot of things that, sh that you know, is not good, but also a lot of good stuff. And I'm very happy about, I mean, uh, in this curfew, we are, we are locked down here in South Africa. I, I found Netflix and there's a lot of stuff there nowadays. So these kind of platforms that give space for authors, but I don't like the word authentic, but I mean, localized production, let's yeah. put it this way, because authentic to me brings all those elephants and sun, sunsets and all this, like, like traveling images, which is also another a story. Mm -hmm. and, and anyway, but yeah, give space in near us, where we can access that we don't have to go. It's nice we can come to Dog Point, but I mean that it comes to where we are mm -hmm. so that we can, we are easily and Doc, we easily access other perspectives. Sure, and Doc Point is all there once a, once a year. And what Ina was referring to, Nollywood, means Nigerian fiction films, so a uh, huge industry and worth, worth of checking out. Sam, your idea. Um, my ideas are, are very basic and they've been said. I would love to come to Europe to make a film and it doesn't, it doesn't have to have anything about where I'm from and just be about as a filmmaker and expressing the ideas that I have. And I think that that speaks to, for there to be any, any change in terms of how we view things, there has to be an acknowledgement of first that there is, there is a difference and there is, um, there is a lack of connection between what what you hear about us and what we are actually experiencing mm. um like you said, mm. the stories that bubble up are the news and if if you just live off the news you would not know of um 
incredible things that are happening in in Kenya and the incredible conversations that are happening in Kenya. Like at, at this point, I'm I'm working on a film that's following the largest experiment um, taking place in the world that's taking place in Kenya about universal basic income, mm. which I know is an important conversation in Finland. And but you see, uh, until the point I'm able to make that film, you would not know that it would be something you'd have to read somewhere and be like, oh, by the way, but here's the chance for you to actually learn and see what how that looks like. So for me, it's accepting that there is a difference and there is something to gain that's incredible from stories that are told by us. And these stories, one thing I think that above most that is so important are told with a dignity that we deserve that has been lost for many years. Hmm. Make sure to uh, let us in Dog Point know about your film whenever it's uh, whenever it's there. I will. Ismo, your idea how to make the reality a little bit more uh, were di diverse. How to how to mix up stories so that we would all know and understand a little bit better each other's realities. Um, well, I, I I go back to what I what I mentioned uh, at the start that uh, that um, establishing networks and partnerships and uh, and uh, and uh, those kind of like mutual communities uh, for me is um, is the challenge and the solution is uh, um, in in the globalized world where we live and where the borders are not that physical anymore even if we are living in lockdowns uh, each of us uh, we are still as we speak we are talking to each other so, so um use the new technology uh use all these tools that we have uh i think that's extremely powerful and cost effective way of uh, of uh, engaging people and uh, and cooperating um then in what comes to, to the kind of like policy level messages and uh, and organization that i represent um the african relations and uh, the whole context on how do we cooperate between uh, the european union and african union that is that is at the core of uh, of uh, of this uh, commission's mandate uh, so for the next uh, next five years uh, in, our, in our mandate and uh, that is something where we see uh, things happening at every level uh, from the head of state to the civil society and um, i think this is the framework where, where we what i can say and uh, where i i would uh, i would uh, i would try to then uh, cooperate and participate uh. sophia Um, I think that, of course, uh, maybe we're, it's all the time talked about Africa as one, and our, our, my organization also, is also called Think Africa. But uh, in a way, then it, we can change the negative image and uh, uh, identity that is given to Africa into positive, and that's what we're trying to do in Think Africa to change the stereotype. Uh, we have uh, African expertise in different fields that are our members and uh, people who are also interested in Africa that have become members not necessarily for um, people who are not also from Africa mm. so I feel that that being together and working I think that will in a way slowly change mm. the narrative of uh, Africa being uh, in despair or needy or this single story narrative yeah. that might change by just working together yeah that's nice uh, here is somebody who is saying that uh, loved, loved, loved last year's Think Africa's theme. I'm not sure what the theme was, but at least you have you have a fan. Here. It was the Africa we want. <laughs> mm, okay. Yes. Yeah. Uh, I think we didn't get many questions. We got some comments that I mostly read. There was one that was sort of. Um, 
didn't uh, di di didn't touch the conversation we were having at that point. So uh, thank you, the participants who have been listening. You have been many, and a bigger thanks to the panelists. We didn't we didn't change the world completely, but at least we got a few good ideas, and uh, it was. Wonderful to have you here and uh, let's keep talking. I think this conversation is important and I welcome everyone uh, apart from Ina and Soko to uh, watch our movies at Dog Point. You can't watch them because they are geo-blocked for Finland. Sorry, so you'll have to come to Finland next year. Sam, it would have been lovely to have you here in Finland because, but well, we all know the reasons why it wasn't possible. So, um, Thank you for this and uh, let's keep watching good films made by African filmmakers and others. And everybody stay safe. And yes. everybody stay safe. Thank you very much. Thank you. Oh, fantastic Thank movie. You. Bye. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you, Soko, for your film. No, good thanks for so much. Thanks for so no, much. Yeah. Bye-bye. Yeah. Bye. 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 Bye.